Hey, this is Jessica, in with my second vlog post of my study abroad vlog. So this time I'm going to talk about how to decide if it is safe to go abroad because some people don't believe it's safe to study abroad because there's so many different scams and things that you just hear about happening. You could have your passport stolen, lose your luggage. Yesterday I went to an FBI Academic Alliance presentation put on by the Study Abroad Center here at Grand Valley. They had three real FBI agents come and talk to us about how to be safe studying abroad and some of the issues that could come up. So I'm going to talk about how you can stay safe when studying abroad and once you know how to stay safe, that might make you more comfortable actually going and studying abroad and you can explain to your parents why you're going to be able to stay away from all of the different problems that could occur. So. I have a list of different things that could be targeted when studying abroad and why this is. First of all, universities are a very open environment, so anyone can come on campus. There aren't any laws or rules stating that non-students can't come here. Just like when you're at Grand Valley, so that really isn't much of a difference. People will sometimes look to steal your valuables, documents, and identity which that occurs in the United States too with credit card machines, but you may be more targeted as you are a student that is not from that country and you're not used to their laws, regulations, and you can stand out. They may try to gain information about US policy, military operations, or new technology to try to help with their militia efforts. And I know that doesn't sound like it would actually happen, but they told us about a story of a man who People befriended him in the other country and got him, gave him money and he thought it was all innocent and he ended up giving away information that was against the United States government. Another thing to think about is how they choose who to target. One way is unsolicited emails. Then there's exploiting social networks, stealing passports, targeting universities and hotels, theft, transit systems, sexual assault, human trafficking, hacking, installing ma malware in your computer, and stealing financial information. And those aren't all. Two of the big ones I've heard about in Europe that they talked about too are the date rape drug and stealing passports. One way to stay away from the date rape drug is to, if anyone tries to give you a drink at a bar or a party or anything, make sure you watch them pour it out of something sealed or if you're at a bar, don't just accept the drink for them, say, hey, yeah, you can buy me a drink and we can go up to the bar together and watch the bartender make it so you know that they haven't put anything in it between the time they picked it up from him and when they gave it to you. Now, stolen passports, they've told us about these things called money belts, which you put on under your clothes and aren't visible at all because they're like super fitting. And you can put your money and your passport and such in there and then you would have to have your clothes taken off to be able to get that stuff. And that's not something you want to think about happening anyways. Before traveling, ways to make sure this doesn't happen, have all your important documents backed up on a computer. Something they suggested is putting them in an email draft and saving that because then it's not on just specifically your computer in case your computer was to get stolen and it's not sent out in an email but it's saved on there so you can access it online. Also, you should not just be carrying copies with you and you should scan everything. Register with the STEP, which is the Travel State Government's website, and then they know where you're going to be and if you have any issues, then they'll know what country you're in and where you're staying and such. And that's something that's required by Grand Valley Study Abroad. Pack your laptop and your carry-on, for sure. If you keep it with you, you can keep it safe. If it's somewhere else, you don't have any guarantees. Someone could get into it. Don't pack offensive or forbidden literature for the country you're going to. Now this sounds either slightly obvious or something you would never think of. They talked about professors you might have in a class if they had written a report about something that could be seen as against the government of where you're going. You may not even think of that, but 
could happen and you can get in really big trouble for it. So don't do it. Don't trust the maids. <laughs> That's also one thing I didn't think of. It reminds me of the whole don't trust the butler because it's always them. Make sure you're really careful because you can safeguard against these things happening. You just have to be ready and pay attention and know how to do so. Make sure you have the US consulate and embassy of the country you're going to's phone numbers and all of their information before you go so that you know if you get into trouble who you can contact. A way to not be targeted for many of these scams is to try to dress like the people that are there. Try to fit in. You don't want to look like a tourist if you're going to be studying abroad. You should try to almost become one of the locals. If you do that, you're going to be less likely to be targeted and you have to look confident and not like you're completely lost. Standing on the street corner with a large map open in front of you trying to figure out where on earth you're supposed to be going is not a way to look like a local. Use authorized taxis. Make sure that they're the type that are a specific company that actually exists, not just a person who's roaming around deciding they're going to pick up people along the road. Because who knows where that could lead. And then the final thing that they talked about was making sure the buildings you're taking pictures of are legal. If there's a sign that says don't take a picture, don't take a picture. It's that simple. You should definitely look into the safety tips before you study abroad and keep these things I've said in mind. These are actual FBI agents that the study abroad center had come in and they've been doing this for a couple of years now because they realized that if you talk to the students before they go abroad, they're more likely to be safe. So be careful, listen to the different things that you can do to stay safe and don't stop considering study abroad because of them. Because there are definitely ways you can safeguard yourself from these scams. Have a great day.